For the first time ever, more than 200 content creators have been given credentials, like press credentials, to attend and cover the Democratic National Convention. The move comes as Democrats continue to try and reach out to young voters. And while polling shows many 18 to 29-year-old voters are leaning in favor of the Democratic nominee, some are worried the enthusiasm behind Kamala Harris may not actually guarantee a turnout on Election Day. So Kalen Allen is joining us. He is one of those content creators at the DNC, and he's previously participated in uh, social media strategy sessions with the Biden administration. You know, Kalen, it's always good to see you. I gotta admit, I'm, I'm a little jelly. I mean, you're living your best life. Last time we, you know, we spoke to you about Beyonce, <laughs> now you're at the DNC, and it looked like one heck of a party last night. Um, so creators are there, and they have those official badges, just like, uh, just like journalists. Uh, they have access that many sort of legacy media members are going to have, including VIP interviews and studio space. How are you seeing um, how are you seeing this play out? What are you seeing other content creators and influencers doing? And what do you make of this strategy? You know, personally, I think that the strategy is absolutely brilliant. I have had a front row seat to watching these creators actually activate and mobilize in ways that I've never seen us been able to have access before. I mean, they are absolutely working. And I think what is great about this is that we are meeting young voters where they are. But I think it even also expands far past young voters, but also the parents of these voters. Mm -hmm. And I think that is absolutely amazing. Um, and, and, you know, clearly it's, it's not just the use of... You know, I was, I was thinking about the use of influencers and content creators mm -hmm. like you. And one of the things that you have is this incredible reach, and you don't cost very much. Um, you know what I mean? You make the content that would probably cost uh, cost millions of dollars for uh, for the party to, to, to make. I'm wondering, though, if the content has content, if you get what, I, what my drift is. Is the content... You know, here's what they're eating at the DNC. Oh, oh my God, I just saw Lil mm. John. Or are content creators talking about the issues that are important to younger voters? Well, I'm glad you brought that up, because one thing that I want to make sure that I uh, emphasize is that there are a wide range of content creators, and everyone was uh, was brought here for a purpose. And what I've seen is that the, the content creators that were selected are people that actually have platforms that they have actually structured around, like policy and different political activations and mm -hmm. conversations. So I think there's a lot of intention and purpose behind there. And of course, you have some people that are here just for the experience, but for the majority, these are people that actually talk about these topics on a day-to-day -day basis. Mm -hmm. And what is your take on how the Harris campaign has been doing? You know, for a while there, there was kind of a, a suggestion that, you know, Harris was kind of, that this was a sugar high and Harris isn't really talking about mm. policy at all. Are you seeing the campaign mm. bring up issues that are important to young people? And what are some of those issues? Oh, absolutely. I think when it comes to the actual policy, what is great about especially the, you know, how they have incorporated content creators is that we have all been provided with a lot of messaging. Mm. We have been provided with a lot of the facts and details that, that comes with the campaign so that we can be the catalyst for that information. You know what I mean? And I know mm. last time that I was there, we discussed about how the campaign was trying to figure it out because it was so last minute that they were thrown into it. And I think what they've been doing is really doing trial and error and figuring out what works. But I think what is great, especially with their social media presence is that they are able to actively be on the topic as it happens mm -hmm. and that you don't have to wait to get the information later on. So tomorrow you're actually going to be participating in a live roundtable discussion. It's called the youth vote. Are we losing the next generation? And it's for the Congressional Black Caucus mm -hmm. and a Rolling Sea Action Fund. Can you tell us a little bit about this panel and what you hope to be discussing? Yes, absolutely. So there, there will be multiple panels, and I will be sitting on that one that you just mentioned. But what we will really be discussing, and I think my angle is that my thing is that I am all about teaching young voters to not rely on media to help them decide what they should do. Mm -hmm. and, and giving the resources of being able to do their own research and not letting media dictate how they should move. Because I do think that social media oftentimes can create a hive mentality. And I don't think that that is conducive to this election because we don't have a lot of time. So it's important to be able to do your own research and make your own informed decision. Yeah, that's that's really smart, uh, Kaylin. Kaylin Allen, thank you very much. Have fun. Thank you, darling.